Uh, for your consideration is the 2015 request for proposal for juvenile justice incentive grant program. Mr. Ty. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> for the past two years, we've been receiving funding from the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council that has been used by the juvenile court to provide evidence-based uh, diversion programs. Uh, the purpose of these programs is it gives the judge an alternative. He can refer the youth that come before the court to one of these programs as opposed to just sending them to jail and, and confining them. Um, the primary uh, program we've been using is something called functional family therapy. Uh, and that's basically where a, a therapist goes into the home um, two to three times per week, meets with the whole family. So it kind of addresses the issue on a family level as opposed to just meeting um, group counseling or, or just meeting with the, the uh, actual youth um, and to try to help them, um, you know, get through those problems, teach some parenting skills, also, you know, some life skills and decision-making skills to hopefully keep that, that youth from getting into further trouble. Um, it's kind of evidence that, that the programs have been working, and one of the reasons we kind of have kept coming back each year and, and requesting that we be allowed to continue receiving this funding is um, <clears throat> over the past two years, our confinement rate, has been reduced by 70%. So that means, um, you know, if you look at how many kids were getting sent off to YDC, getting to jail or in-home confinement before we started these programs, and now we've seen a 70% drop, which is one of the highest rates in the state um, to date. We've also had um, 26 youth that were served the first year with a program called aggression replacement therapy. And, set, and so far to date, over the two-year period, we've had 71 that have gone through FFT. So of those 97 youth, um, only eight of those have, have reoffended. And that's kind of another measuring stick that, we, that the CJCC and, and the state uses to determine whether the funding is, is you know, cost-effective and it's working is the recidivism rate. So and that's kind of our ultimate goal is to, um, rather than just sending these kids off to to jail because what they were saying you send them to jail and then they turn right around and get out and, and get in trouble again um, so we want to kind of break that cycle and it seems to be working so um, each year we've kind of increased you know as the program has been more successful they've kind of increased the amount of funding we could request um, so this year we're requesting um, the approval to put in for the grant in the amount of four hundred fifty eight thousand five hundred ninety two dollars uh, in this proposal, we would propose to continue working with uh, EBA or evidence-based associates. That's kind of the um, the managing um, managing group that has kind of managed the grant for us. Work with the providers, work with the judge and the DJJ, making sure we get the kids um, that meet the criteria into these programs. Get all the data that we had to require, we had to submit to the state, and kind of do all the the administration part. Um, to where our, our role is to actually upload the data, sending it to, to the uh, state, and submitting the reimbursement request. Because uh, this, this is, even though the grant pays 100% of the cost of the program, we do, um, we have to pay, pay the invoices up front and then we submit and get reimbursed, um, you know, in a timely manner from the CJCC. Uh, one thing that's different this year is we're kind of, Lowndes County, we're kind of in that, that area um, it takes for a therapist to be cost effective. They have to be able to serve over a year period 32 kids. Um, otherwise, you know, they're kind of their caseload is is so much is not enough that it's it's worth their time to um, to administer the program. So we're kind of in between the two and three therapists mark. We've got a little more. We could get a little more kids than than two therapists can handle, but we don't really have enough to justify um, having three full time. We just wouldn't have enough referrals. So um, we spoke with CJCC, and what we're going to do is we're proposing to also extend the services to Eccles County, which they don't have very many, and Judge Council already serves that, that county anyway, and also to Brooks County, allowing the juvenile court judge over in Brooks County to refer some of, um, some of their youth <coughs> to our program and be served by our therapist. And there's several reasons that's beneficial. Number one, not only because it allows us to have three therapists here in Lowndes County, um, but also it, it works. It, it should work out pretty seamlessly because the DJJ office, uh, the Juvenile Justice Office here in, in uh, Valasta, also serves and works with that, that court. 
so the staff kind of already um, you know that's working with the EBA partners um, you know be a real easy transition there and also in talking you know when we got together and we're talking about the grant proposal with the judge and the DJJ staff and some of the district attorney staff um, you know because of the proximity you know, there's a lot of kids from Brooks County that come over here and commit crimes and vice versa um, so we're hopeful that not only are we helping kids just because that's a good thing to do but also just because of the proximity even helping some kids in Brooks County might have an effect on the crime rate um, that we see here in Lowndes County so uh, with that um, our, our request is that, that you authorize the chairman to sign all the documents uh, you should have a copy of the things like 40 pages of the, of the grant application there but um, authorize the chairman to sign all the documents required to submit this proposal and if you have any <coughs> questions about it I would be happy to answer them any questions for Mr. Todd? You know, I yeah. just want to really thank you for continuing to work on this, sitting in on some of the information that we have received. I think it's a great thing. Thank you. Uh, actually, uh, what is our reimbursement uh, time frame? We, um, this, this year, we've been submitting on a quarterly basis. So every three months, we submit a, a reimbursement request. And they've been turning those around. And from the time that I submit the the request to the time we actually get the check is usually 30 days or less. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. I, I also believe that one of the most one of the significant things here is that it will also have an opportunity to allow Lowndes County to work with uh, two neighboring counties in Brooks and Eccles County to help them with their needs, but at the same time, in turn, will be helping Lowndes County as well. So it's a good opportunity to work together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.